the, it's the atmosphere we're trying to create here, right? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And that's what we're trying to do as Democrats across the country. Exactly. <laughs> so let's go, if we could, let's go to um, Nicole. Um, yes. And uh, we want to really, really thank her for reaching out to, um, to Yvette Lewis. Uh, it's a real honor to have her. Um, and it's a really exciting time, I would imagine, to, uh, to be uh, working with the people within the state and I'd like to see if you can strengthen our connection uh, with you. Anyway, let me uh, let Nicole uh, take it from here. And if Nicole, and again, thank you so much. And if you could do a, uh, a nice job of introducing our wonderful speaker. Yes, um, so hopefully everyone can hear me. Uh, it's a pleasure for me to introduce um, our special guest for the day, um, Yvette Lewis. It wasn't a heavy lift for me to ask because Yvette always makes herself accessible to everyone throughout the state. Um, and then since I'm also on the board, I kind of talk with her on a regular basis anyway. Um, but, you know, it's such a privilege to have Yvette back as the chair of the Maryland Democratic Party. Uh, she was first elected as chair back in 2011 and at that time became the second African-American woman to serve in that post for the state, um, serving from 2011. Uh, during that period, she raised $7 million and ran stu two statewide coordinated campaigns. Um, Yvette was also our fearless leader. Uh, in 2012, as we attended the Democratic National Convention in Charlotte, North Carolina, and she planned and organized all the state party events there, which encompassed about 15 uh, various events, more than 300 attendees over that five-year period. Um, during her role as chair as well, she was all across the state of Maryland, uh, visiting central committees, Democratic clubs, and really pushing to elevate the party and its uh, leadership councils. And so then also as chair, of course, not only was she a leader here in Maryland, but really a leader across the country and serving as secretary of the National Association of State Democratic Chairs and also serving on the board of the Association of State Democratic Chairs um, in the voter co-op program, making critical investments in the voter file for all of the state parties across the country um, and was awarded the Geneva Jones Award for her service and leadership mm -hmm. during her first go around as the state party. <laughs> so um, afterwards, she was uh, elected to serve as one of our at-large DNC state um, and represented the state on the Convention Credentials Committee, as well as later on the DNC Unity Reform Committee. Uh, she truly believes that the party is a big tent party and we must be open and, and inclusive of absolutely everyone. Um, and so it was uh, really not a no brainer uh, when a vacancy occurred and everyone thought immediately of Yvette Lewis to serve as our chair again and so she was reelected back in 2019 to serve as our chair and has done a phenomenal job even in the midst of this pandemic uh, we're continuing to raise money we are operating uh, you know in a really good position all things considering um, and our finances look great and Yvette did a marvelous job with an event that the party had several weeks ago, uh, getting all of the various presidential, uh, Democratic presidential candidates uh, to come here virtually to Maryland uh, to kind of kick us off for our general election. Uh, and so I, it's my honor to welcome Yvette back to the club because she's no stranger to us. Um, and she lives right here in Prince George's County in Bowie. And so just thank you so much, Yvette, for just joining us again. I am delighted to be here. Thank you, Nicole, and thank you all for inviting me. Um, this is this is a great time. You know, someone said, "Well, how is it being chair this time as opposed to to last time?" Actually, it's a lot more fun because everybody recognizes the importance of this election. Everybody recognizes the role that the Maryland Democratic Party can play not only here in Maryland but nationally. The last time it was it was easy. We had the the trifecta. I mean, we had the General Assembly, we had the Governor's Mansion, we had Barack Obama. Anybody could have been chair uh, at that time because we had it all. But we've had two cycles now where we haven't had it all. And this last cycle, 
with Donald Trump has been a nightmare unlike anything any of us could have imagined. Yeah. So people are engaged and people are excited and people are motivated and they want to work. And when we pick up the phone and call, people are saying yes, because they recognize this is not hyperbole when we say this is the most important election of our lifetime. This one really is. The others, that sounded good, but this one, our democracy is at stake. And yeah. we, have, we have barely, barely survived one term of Donald Trump, we will not survive two, no. especially in light of the news today that he's allowing Russians to put a bounty on the head of American soldiers, for God's sakes. What will happen after, with another four years, America as we know it will not exist. And so it is really important. So people are recognizing that and they're coming to the Democratic Party in Maryland and they're asking, what can we do? So we have positioned ourselves with the Biden campaign to be a flagship state for them. We're going to be, we are their flagship export state. And what that means is not only are we working on the ground here in Maryland on a daily basis, making calls here in Maryland on a daily basis, we're also calling into other states. We're calling into Pennsylvania, Virginia, and North Carolina. As a matter of fact, our executive director, Eva Lewis, who is the other half of the Lewis and Lewis team, as we call ourselves at, Maryland, at the, the state party, she was actually on a panel yesterday uh, for the Western Maryland Summit with the executive directors of Virginia, North Carolina, and Pennsylvania talking about the work that we're doing together. In addition to that, we're having days of action twice a week, Wednesday and Saturday, Michael. Yes, Wednesdays and Saturdays, days of action, where we're actually calling into other states, Kentucky and South Carolina. And we made over 4,000 calls into Maine. Susan Collins has got to go. As uh, Kamala Harris says, girl, got to go. Susan Collins has got to go. So we're calling in all of these states where we think that we can make a difference because just winning the White House is not going to be enough. Right. We've got to hold the House and we've got to win the Senate because Mitch McConnell has got to go. And even if we can't defeat Mitch McConnell, take his Senate seat away from, from him, we can certainly take his leadership role away from him. So mm -hmm. that is the goal to, to take back the Senate so that we can get some things done in this country. So we recognize that here in Maryland, we've got the best organizing team on earth and the best volunteers ever who are engaged and passionate about working um, not only here, but around the country. So we are making these calls into these various states, but there's a long picture that I have in mind here because we expect reciprocity because we're gonna need their help in 2022. And that's why we're working hard to to establish relationships in those states, not just with their volunteers, but with their leadership, so that they know when Maryland calls in 2022 and it's time for us to take back the governor's mansion and flip, or more seat, flip more seats in the House and the Senate, we're gonna need them to come in and call for us. And we may not be able to take him out this time, but doggone it, we're gonna get Andy Harris the next time. And we might get him this yes, time. But if great. we don't get him this time, we're gonna work like the Dickens to get rid of him the next time so that we can finally have some sanity out on the Eastern shore as well. I mean, for mm -hmm. this man to be a medical doctor and for him to vote against huh. things that he knows, he knows he took an oath to preserve and protect for his patients, for him to vote against those things just because he has to toe the Republican line is unconscionable. So those are the kinds of things that we're trying to do. As Nicole mentioned, we do have some good programs out there that we're excited about. We did do a great rally a couple of weeks ago, just before our primary, where over 1,200 people tuned in. And even more have seen it since because it's up on our, our website. We exceeded 2016 turnout in the primary with all of the problems with the ballots and the mail yeah. in and the drop off sites and all of that. We still exceeded our 2016 voting numbers. That's because people are showing they will crawl over glass in order to vote in this election cycle. And we're gonna do even more in November. The other thing that we've had going on is we've got this uh, panel on Tuesday night, a Black Lives Matter Next Steps panel. Now the purpose of this panel is not to vent and it's not to dump on one group or another. This is a solutions oriented panel. Mm. We want to have a conversation about what we can do here in Maryland to, to uh, bring about better understanding, better relationships, better collaborations. That's what this is about. And we have some wonderful people that will be on the panel. We have uh, 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 our new Congressman Kwaisi Mfume. We have Karine Jean-Pierre, who is now the senior advisor to the Biden campaign. And you, many of you may know her from MSNBC. She's, she's a Marylander and a great friend. We have uh, an activist, Christian Oriata. We have Wes Moore. 
and um, Senate Janelle, Delegate Janelle Wilkins, and Senator Mary Washington is our moderator. I'm very excited about it. We already have well over 400 RSVPs. People have signed up. It's going to be on Facebook Live, so you can join us Tuesday night from 7 until 8.30. You'll be able to, you know, send your questions in and we'll get them answered. But this is the first in a series of panels that we're going to do. This is not going to be a one-time conversation. I think that's been part of the frustration. You know, things happen, all of this energy bubbles up, and then it sort of recedes. Well, this time the energy is not receding because you can't look away. We all saw eight minutes and 46 seconds. Nobody can look away and say that that didn't happen. And I think the energy is there to try to come to some agreement and some consensus here in Maryland. And Maryland can be the leader. We can have a template mm. here of how we want to, want to see people proceed around the country. And we've done it before and we can certainly do it again. So the Black Lives Matter panel is uh, Tuesday night. We certainly hope that all of you will join us. We also have um, coming up a convention. I don't know what it's gonna look like. I don't have a clue. They told us that um, Milwaukee is going to be the flagship the, the, the anchor, I guess, mm -hmm. uh, for the convention. So some people will go to Milwaukee, but the majority of the people won't. And I know that our delegates, um, they, a lot of them won't be able to go. Some people have pre-existing conditions. Some people have financial concerns. Everybody, we just want to make this a wonderful experience. And in many ways, it's gonna be even better because people mm -hmm. at home will really be able to participate, right? In ways that you haven't been able to do. So we're looking at ways to see if we can get in a large um, field where we can do some social distancing for an opening night kind of event where people will be invited to come. We wanna see if we can do something on Wednesday night when there's roll call, when Marilyn gets to read our number uh, of our delegates that are pledged to Joe Biden and possibly something on Thursday night um, which will be uh, the vice president's speech, a way for all of us to get together. So we're looking at that. A lot will depend on the governor and what the governor is allowing um, in terms of enclosed spaces where we can be, because we'd have to have technology in order for everybody to Skype in and see everything that's going on. So we'll have to see, but the outdoor spaces, we think that we might be able to do that pretty successfully. So we're looking at a couple of places. Just know that if we are able to do things in an outdoor type of setting, we intend to move it around the state um, so that everybody will have an opportunity to participate. It won't just be in one location. So we wanna kind of move it around so that everybody feels like they have the experience. The one thing we are going to continue to do every morning at convention, we have a breakfast. So we are going to be having those Zoom uh, early morning meetings and they will be open. So once again, you'll be able to participate and you'll be able to see the goal is to have guest speakers come in because that's what you, that's what convention is all about. You have your breakfast and you bring in a guest speaker, uh, someone not of your delegation. I mean, we, we're fortunate here in Maryland because we get to see our representatives all the time. So it'll be fun to bring in some guests. I know when I did it in Charlotte, um, believe it or not, um, on the Wednesday morning breakfast, because Doug Gansler was an attorney, was the attorney general at the time, and he sponsored that breakfast. And we ended up having um, at that breakfast Kamala Harris and Bo Biden, because both were attorneys general at the time, oh, wow. and they were friends with Doug Gansler, who knew um, that first of all that we would lose the beloved Bo, but also where Kamala Harris was going to end up, because that was really sort of like her coming out party. They that was her first time speaking at a convention. I shared on this gorgeous white suit. Of course, I would remember that. Um, but it was so that that's what we'd like to do to try to bring in guest speakers for our morning meeting. So those will take place um, every day, Monday through Thursday. Um, so we're working on that. So just know that we're working really hard to uh, try to make this an all inclusive experience for those of you that are here in Maryland, whether you're a delegate or not. Um, mm -hmm. We want you to participate. The other thing. Um, is we're opening up, we, we, uh, Nicole talked about the money that we're raising. Well, one of the things that we have now is our uh, Blue Circle Donor Program. And this is a small dollar program, five, but, but it's a recurring program, $5 a month, $10 a month, whatever you can give. That's the kind of thing that really helps us at the party. That money goes directly to hiring the regional organizing directors. Those are the people that are out in the state working with the clubs, working with the central committees, working with the volunteers, putting the infrastructure together so that we can run all of the phone banks and do all of the work that we are going to do virtually if we have to, but once we're able to get out, 
then we'll, we'll be able to get out. We've been working with progressive groups like Swing Left and uh, Yes We Canvas and um, in, uh, Indivisible and other groups like that. But our regional organizers are the ones that are fanning out across the state. We currently have three, but we want to add more. And they've divided the state up and they have very large chunks of the state that they're responsible for. But we wanna be able to hire more organizers so that we can have more concentrated touches in different parts of the state because we have more staff to cover. That's what the Blue Circle does. That's what, the, that's what that money goes to, to making sure that those organizers are out there in the state and they're working for all of you. So please, if you can give $5, $10, $20, and 20 cents for 2020, a recurring donation, I give to the Blue Circle, Eva gives to the Blue Circle because it's important enough for us to invest in as well. I give money to the DNC as a recurring donor. I'm a member. I think we should support the membership, the other the, the programs that, that we're trying to do. So if you can, you know, spare five or ten dollars a month, we would be so grateful to you um, at the state party. But I have to tell you, all of this means nothing if we don't win elections. It means absolutely nothing. Right. Absolutely nothing. We raise money to win, we campaign to win, we canvas to win, we phone bank to win, we register voters to win, we show up to vote to win. It's all about winning. So as we enter this election season, remember, mobilizing is for the moment. Organizing is for a movement. So what I want you to do is let nothing stand in the way of our movement. Let's be good Democrats and don't be afraid to share our values. Be good Democrats and fight for what we know is right. Be good Democrats and stand up against hate and racism and misogyny and corruption and just feeling bad about America. Stand up against that and be good Democrats and let's go out there and win. Thank you all so much for inviting me to be part of this wonderful, cool picnic. And that's why I'm wearing my sunglasses. Those of you that have no sunglasses on, you don't have the picnic vibe going. That's why I'm dressed this way. But thank you so much for allowing me to be a part of this. If you have any questions, I'm happy to answer. But I want you to know that it is an honor. Seriously, I'm going to take my glasses off so you can see my it is an honor and privilege to serve you every single day. And I thank you for this opportunity. I am accessible. I will go anywhere. I will speak to anybody. I will do anything. I truly love the Maryland Democratic Party. I think that I have evidenced that over the years. And I will continue to do all that I can to make this party as successful as I possibly can. So thank you all very much. And I'll answer any questions. If you thank have. you so much. Um, I, 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 Anna, can I, I just question. say something after you go? Well, no, I was just going to, you know, that, you know, thank you so much for your uh, leadership, your uh, inspirational words, and, uh, you know, for all the work that you do. It, it's it's uh, more than a full-time job trying to lead the Maryland uh, Democratic Party, and we're just so fortunate to have an individual like yourself in this role. So I've got two questions. One, sure. just in a very specific way, you know, this is a well-established club, and we've got a pretty large uh, reach just in terms of the number of people on our mailing list. And, the number of uh, members, active members, and just other members. So what, ex specifically, what, what are you looking for from us, you know, short term, like in July and August? Phone, phones, phones, because that's all we can do. Mm -hmm. That's all. We can't do anything else. And Michael is on this call, and he can tell you how to get hooked in with the party um, so that we can get you guys set up to start phone banking. That is, that is as much as we're going to be able to do right now until this, whatever this is, is lifted. So I would recommend Michael, connect with Michael. He'll get you set up and phones, phones, phones. You know, I, I did a little bit of uh, phone banking and, you know, it's really evolved from what, what it was a few years ago. And, you know, you can kind of, the way that it's set up now, and I think the way that it's going to be set up is you can kind of do it from your own home at, oh, yeah. at your own pace. You know, if you just want to make a few calls for like 15 or 20 minutes, you can do that, come back to it later but it's uh, really easy to do. It's all, it's, a lot of it's on the computer and uh, with your phone, but it's, it's very, very convenient now. And it's not that uh, dialing with the sheet of paper and then checking off the box of what the response was or whatever, it's not like that anymore. And so the other thing too, is that people are at home now and we're finding that people want to talk. They're a lot more engaging yeah. than when you catch them coming in after a hard day's work, 
you know, and they're short and they don't feel like talking to somebody phone banking, right? So um, this, it's really proving to be a lot more successful and quite frankly, a lot more fun because people are, I got a call uh, last Sunday from someone in Michigan and they were calling on behalf of Joe Biden into Maryland. <laughs> And I said, well, let me tell you who you got on the phone here. <laughs> you don't need to worry about the Lewis household. I think we're good. But yeah, so people, people are getting calls and people are enjoying uh, having those interactions. So you're right. Yeah, the other thing I wanted to ask you about, you mentioned the Blue Circle Fund, which is sort of a new uh, ongoing way. You, you make the commitment and if it's $5 or $10 a month, it just automatically happens and it makes it a little bit easier to give. So is that something we can uh, put a button or something on our website? I think uh, Nicole just put it in the chat. She put the uh, the link in oh, the good. chat. So it's there. And we'd love to have you. It was so funny because we did a call. Uh, and you can be a member of the Blue Circle. You can be a Blue Circle member. And you can also be an ambassador. And you know how you get to be an ambassador? Just bring in some friends with you. And you get elevated to that ambassador status. Bring in some friends. OK. The last thing that, that gets me a little bit, you know, we, we, we're in this, uh, you know, Maryland's a big state, and uh, certainly Prince George's County, Montgomery County, most of the states, uh, you know, relatively progressive. But man, as soon as you go across that Bay Bridge, uh, you start seeing the Trump signs and whatnot. And, and I know signs are, you know, it's, it, it's money needs to go a lot of places. But, you know, is there any thinking about just trying to get more science? You know, things, the environment in, in the world, in the country right now has changed. Maybe we should be just making it a point to get more signs over there on the history. We're Shore. working with the Biden uh -huh. campaign to start getting those signs in. I refer to Maryland as an island of blue surrounded by a sea of red. And it's that sea of red that's, that has us having our regional organizing directors in those areas, right? Because okay, it's easy to be a Democrat in Prince George's County and Montgomery County and some of our, our and Baltimore City and other places. Mm -hmm. But it's harder to be a Democrat in Garrett County and Washington County and Allegheny County. And that's where we really want to focus because there are committed Democrats out there. The fact that they are Democrats in those areas lets you know they are committed Democrats. And we want to do all we can to boost those people and there are a lot of Republicans out there that have just had it. Had it. They uh, have just had it. And right. you know what? Even if they try us for one cycle, we get them, we show them our values, we get them to see that the Democratic Party is a big tent party that will welcome them no matter where they came from. Hopefully many of them will. <coughs> and we're going to have a president that's going to restore decency and honor to this country in a way mm -hmm. that people want to be a part of it. I was just reading an article that just flashed uh, across uh, Politico about how a lot of young people, young people who just said, I am not voting for Joe Biden, I'm gonna sit this out or I'll vote third party. And how Joe Biden's numbers among young people have jumped up from 46% to 53% because mm -hmm. these young people understand it too. This man is crazy. And what he's doing to us it's their future. We'll be in a nursing home somewhere, you know, but they're the ones that are going to have to deal with the aftermath of this and try to make America something again. Not even, I don't know, great, just something after he not only destroys our democracy, but I'm telling you what, he's taking that Republican Party down with him. He's taking that Republican Party down with yes. him. I think Republicans recognize that. And that's why I think we're going to have a lot of conversions in this election cycle. If you haven't seen the ads that are out there for the Lincoln Project, yes. oh, okay, to yourself to see those Lincoln Project ads. No, that's nothing but Republicans. It's Steve Schmidt and it's Kellyanne Conway's husband and right. others. Those ads are spot on. And it's Republicans who have had enough. And Joe Biden is such a decent person. I think that he would be the kind of person, I refer to him as... Um, my grilled cheese sandwich and tomato soup. Mm -hmm. It's comfort food. And I think we all need that right now. We desperately need that. So other questions. Great. Oh, before we go to the questions, hold on for one second, please. I okay. just want to just let people know, please, um, if you could just get to the point of your question rather than going on and on. Everybody remembers the 237 words of Lincoln in Gettysburg. No one remembers the two-hour speech by a great orator who spoke before Lincoln. So keep that in mind and keep it short. Who would like to go next? 
Um, so Conrad, I put in the chat the order in which people have their hands raised. Oh, great. Okay. So next, uh, we have Jay Davis. So I'll unmute you, Jay. And then after Jay, Jane Young had her hand. And then Ross Harper has a question after that. That's good. Thanks, Nicole. Actually, I had I had the applaud hands up, but I just want to thank Yvette for coming and, and joining us today. And I just got an, uh, a text from a friend of mine who was a very staunch Nixon Republican, uh -huh. who uh, he will, he's in South Carolina. He's voting for Joe Biden. He says he is not ever, ever going to vote for Trump. So well, thank you again. Well, send a message and tell him to vote for Jamie Harrison, too, because Lindsey Graham needs to go. Yes, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> Okay, who's next, Nicole? Uh, Jane Young. That's me. And I've done a lot of phone banking, um, mostly in the past, and things have changed a lot. Um, we, not just the coronavirus, but we're getting a whole lot of um, spams and scam calls. So we never answer our phone anymore. Um, and I think most people are like that. So what I would really like to do, um, I think I'm pretty good at phone banking, but I would in the past, they said, don't ever leave a message. And that was fine because we would get still a lot of people. But now I don't think we're getting a lot of people. So I would like to leave a message, um, whether that's in the rules uh, or not. But I would like to leave a very brief message. And if somebody called me from the um, Democratic Party, I would pick up the phone. And, but I'm not picking up for anybody else that I don't recognize. But it, well, you know, unless, unless, they, unless it's somebody that I want to talk to. So I think I that's think the hazards of phone banking a little bit. Michael, are we leaving messages? Unmute. At this, at, at this point, no, but we will eventually incorporate a short message into the script. And could you do like a recording or something that we could have? Or I mean, I, I could do my own, but I just think that would be so much more efficient to be able to do that. It's, go ahead, Michael. So with the uh, with the current phone banking system that we have, it doesn't allow for a recording to be left. Um, if we uh, advance to a different form of uh, system, um, that option could be available. And I've seen systems that uh, have used that option before in the past as well. And Michael, what's the easiest way to get in touch with you and follow up with you? Yeah, sure. So my email, uh, and I'll, I can actually throw it in the link, is mbaird. Uh, at uh, mddems.org. I'll throw it in the chat. Um, but on our events page on the mddems.com website, there is a full list of all of our events, including our swing state events uh, and our current in state Good. events as well. Good. And you'll, you'll great, you'll, you'll send the connecting emails and so forth um, to exactly. me and I can get it out to everybody and so forth. Great. Absolutely. Super. Who's next? I was just going to say, Mike, to remind, uh, Michael is the uh, political director for the Maryland State Party. Is that correct, Michael? Yes, I am. Great. I, I, and I also uh, serve the dual role as organizing director as well. Does a fantastic job. Super. All right. So next we have a question in the chat from Roz Harper. Um, she asks, do you anticipate we will face voter suppression challenges here in Maryland or any other challenges we may face? Over my dead body. <laughs> That's all I have to say on that one. Over my dead body. Now, oh, you want to get, you wanna get my ire up? Talk to me about voter suppression. I've been working on this since 2011, mm -hmm. begging people to get on board mm -hmm. with trying to get ahead of things. My first mission was to get people to try to understand that voter ID was a form of voter suppression. Beat them at their own game. Help people get ID. Don't fight it in court. Fight it in court right. and get ID. Well, we spend all of our time fighting it in court. The man has stacked the courts with judges now, right? We need to yeah. help people get the, if they're going to put those barriers in our, in our faces, then let's knock them down. Let's knock them down. Okay, you want me to have an ID? Here it is. But my legislature has to pay for it for people that can't afford it. My Republican legislators that are saying that I have to have this voter ID, then you're going to have to help me get it. They would have backed off of that, you know? So no, we're going to do all that we can. We're already talking. We're already putting together an after um, action report based on what we saw happening here in Maryland uh, back in uh, this last primary. One of the things that, that I'm advocating for, if nothing else, if the vendor is a problem, and I will, I, let's say I concede that. 
the vendor was a problem as far as ballots and get them mailed and all of that stuff, then we need to have somebody on the ground with the vendor. How hard is that? And then we also need to have, oh, I don't know, maybe a tracking number on the ballots when they're mailed. Amazon sends you a tracking number. They tell you where your package is <laughs> when it's en route. Just little things like that we need to start looking at. But the one thing we need is, a, is an answer from the governor. It was supposed to come at the end of this month. So maybe tomorrow or Tuesday, we'll hear what, the, what it's going to look like. But the minute we find out what it's going to look like, the Maryland Democratic Party goes into overdrive um, with educating people so that they know exactly what they have to do on election day. The other thing that we need, that we're advocating for, more well, drop-off spaces. They only had one drop-off site in Charles County, for God's sakes, at 10 o'clock uh. in the morning. They had 200 people in line. Right. So, like I said, you don't want to start down that road with me because you see I get really fired up about voter suppression. As far as voter suppression around the country, we've got um, a very, very dynamic voter protection team here in Maryland plugged into the voter protection team in DN at the DNC, plugged into the voter protection teams around the country. And we're already starting to work on finding ways to make sure that people have access to the ballot. And I think after what has happened in this primaries, in these primaries, did you see the people beating on the windows, on the doors in Kentucky yes. last week when yes. they locked them out? I mean, they are going to do everything. That is the only tool the Republicans have left. That is mm -hmm. the only tool. And the only way to overcome that tool is to show up in massive numbers, which I think we're going to do this time in massive numbers everywhere so that it doesn't matter how badly you suppress the vote. People will stand in line and they will not move. In Georgia, the last person that voted, voted in, at midnight. The same thing happened in Texas. The same thing happened in Washington state. Wisconsin. So, Wisconsin. People are going to stand in line. Our job is to turn out those people so they can't be turned away. So they can try to suppress the vote, but we're gonna be out there in so many numbers, they'll just, hopefully they'll give up. Okay, so the next question we have is from uh, Sammy Shell, Samia Shell. Um, as a young person, how can we organize a large group of young voters to help GOTV and Black and Hispanic communities? Now, you guys know how to do that. You know how to do social media. You know how to get on those, on those uh, things that you're on all day long and connect with your neighbors <laughs> on Instagram. That's a good thing. That's not a criticism. It's a beautiful thing. We didn't have that way of communicating. If I was late coming home, I just got on punishment because I didn't have a way to call home on the cell phone and say, I'm going to be late. I just missed curfew. You guys don't have that. You guys have the most sophisticated way of communicating with each other that I am absolutely in awe of. And if what those, if, if what I heard is true and the way those little teenagers kept people away from Donald Trump's rally, you guys are awesome. That is how you engage. You start talking to your friends, you start talking to your neighbors and you start organizing each other. Start these chats, these conversations back and forth with each other and get and organize your own phone banks calling each other texting each other, whatever it is you guys do to communicate, you can tell me what to do, sweetheart, because you guys are the masters at communicating right now. Absolutely. Yes. Okay. Um, I don't see, I don't know if there's any other questions. I don't see any additional. I have a grade. quick question. Yeah. Nicole? Oh, hold up. I need, yes, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, I don't see any other hands raised right now. Um, right here. I think Conrad has a question. Oh, yes. And then Emma. Oh, Conrad. Oh, yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. And I'm using two fingers. <laughs> the best line that George W. Bush had was when asked, what did you feel about the reception? And he said, well, I was pleased that people, when they raised their hand, they used two fingers and not one. But anyway, um, the uh, Baltimore Sun had an article today about the election officials group and they were talking about a variety of approaches not just by mail what's hybrid what's hybrid. your feeling and where do you see that going i'm not really sure my feeling is whatever gets the most people to vote i'm all for so if it if it's hybrid where you know some people request an absentee ballot and some people um uh go and drop off or go in person or ear more early voting I say the more the merrier, whatever it takes to make it easier, not harder for people to vote. 
Um, there were elements this last time, especially with people that didn't get ballots and people who had their ballots returned because they had moved. A lot of people had moved and they had not alerted the Board of Elections. So what happened was when they tried to deliver the ballot, it was returned. Then you go to, uh, to vote on same day voting and they, you find out, well, your ballot is here. You, you, you returned your ballot. Well, no, your ballot was returned because you had moved. And so it, it was recorded a certain mm -hmm. way as having been returned, but not having been voted. So right. people had to vote provisionally. So, you know, clear, cleaning up all of that, but whatever it takes for people to be able to vote, I say all of the above. Okay. All right. We do have a hand raised, Conrad, uh, by Jerry. Uh, you want to okay. go ahead? Hi. <clears throat> I'm, 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 I'm uh, concerned that the, the, the virus is, is generating all sorts of economic disruptions, and there'll be lots of people who uh, will be without money, and they won't be able to pay their rent. And they may move voluntarily, or they may be evicted, um, or they won't be able to pay their mortgage and they'll move. Uh, so it's, this will greatly complicate the, um, the, mail, the mail balloting. But it also raises the question, if, if somebody is in economic dire straits, um, they may not be inspired to vote. They, they may be... Uh, sufficiently oppressed or discouraged that um, they'll say, no, not this time. And uh, I guess I'm, I'm, I'm probably uh, saying this because in, in January, I heard a go out the vote getter um, in um, Atlanta who was saying that the, the big, big untapped vote is black males. And he went on to say that black females vote very well, uh, thank you. But the, the, the black males were, were, were not hearing from the Democratic primary uh, uh, talk that um, addressed their concerns. Mm. And I guess the, you know, the number one concern was uh, keeping out of jail. And the you know the second the second third and fourth concern was all related to uh, I, I I need a, a, a reasonable job so that I can contribute to society so I, I can I can I can feed my my baby and it, it and none of the candidates in the Democratic debates were were talking about those things and I don't know, hope, hope, hopefully um, this will change but I. I well, the Democratic debates, uh, I wouldn't hold that up as any kind of um, uh, symbol of what should or shouldn't, will or will not be discussed. I mean, those debates were, um, they weren't debates, they were talking sections. I mean, you know, you have so many people on the stage, you don't get to answer questions, and you can only answer questions as they are given to you by the moderator. So I wouldn't use that as a template, but what I would use as a template is a vice president's uh, agenda, especially his agenda for African-Americans, his Lift Every Voice agenda. And he specifically deals with income inequality. He also deals with uh, criminal justice reform, but more importantly, he deals with building black wealth because there are some young black men that are interested in moving ahead. There are some that are interested in being entrepreneurs and there's some that have some ex exceptional ideas about how they can contribute to society. And I think that those are the conversations that are being had and those are the conversations that are part of the vice president's proposals. Um, and so that's one of the reasons I'm excited that uh, Karine Jean-Pierre is going to be on the panel on Tuesday because she is going to specifically address the vice president's Lift Every Voice agenda and that that is his agenda for, for Black America. I think that um, there shouldn't be a separate conversation for black men and a different one for black women. I think there should be a conversation for us as Americans, because really, we all have the same agenda. 
whether no matter what color we are, I think we all have the same agenda. There's not a single parent that's not concerned about being able to take care of their child. There's not uh, a, a couple that's not concerned about being able to pay their rent. There's not an African-American, a young person or any person that's not concerned about being stopped by the police and then they find themselves in a situation. They don't know how they got there. They could lose their lives or they could end up with a criminal record. So that's a, th these are all human issues and concerns. And I think that the vice president, his cabinet, his running mate, and all of the people that he surrounds himself with will address those issues that you just mentioned. Emmett, did you have a question? Yeah, I did. I had a question. Uh, so I, I was just wondering, uh, you know, we're, we're a very well-established club here in uh, the Greenbelt District 22. Roosevelt Club's been around since the 70s, and you know, we, we are able to, uh, you know, to canvas and do a lot of uh, phone calling and uh, voter registration. You know, it's, these are all priorities of ours, and we, we do them well. So I, I was just wondering, I, I think I heard something about uh, the state party uh, looking at the, the different uh, clubs in particular and looking to in, instate some rules or regulations or some, some sort of changes in the relationship. So I was just wondering if you can give us, give us a heads up on what that may be. We, we're kind of used to doing things in a certain way. We have our, our constitution and our bylaws and you know, we, we're an effective group, so. Michael, uh, you wanna take that? Cause I see your face. Yeah, no, absolutely. Uh, that is actually um, in reference to our the the central committees uh, it, the, and that um, I, what you're speaking to specifically um, doesn't relate to the clubs at all. We as a Maryland Democratic Party actually don't have any controls over the way clubs operate um, or run their organizations. So um, we uh, but the rules and the bylaws changes that are being proposed. Um, and will be looked at and discussed at, a, at our next statewide meeting is uh, in reference to our central committees, not our clubs. Okay, thank you. Absolutely. Oh, Nicole? Oops, let me unmute myself. Yes. Hi. Um, the other thing in what Yvette was just going through, I think it's, it's and I think that, uh, and I think it's really it's as basic as it sounds. I think when we use the term vice president, that it's really important to say uh, Biden so that people, because there are people out there that are going to thinking, well, which vice president are they talking about? So, I mean, that's a real basic thing, but I think it's important to say Biden after we say vice president. Not if we're uh, saying good stuff, they'll know who we're talking about. <laughs> Well, but I the thing you. is, I hear you. <laughs> yeah, but there is no shortage of limited intelligence, <laughs> right? Um, and I was just going to say also that when we, we talk about African Americans that, and you made reference to it, but I think it's also important to talk about Latinos and to talk Absolutely. about Native Americans. Absolutely. And so that, you know, when we say everybody across the board, without getting overboard about it. I well, think especially in our AAPI community as well, because yeah. they are under exactly. siege right now, especially with our president and his racist language. So, yes. I mean, he hasn't spared anyone, Muslims, yeah. African Americans. Yeah. He's an equal opportunity offender. So, Asians. Yeah. Yeah, he's building walls around everybody. Yeah. Yeah. And then Lawrence O'Donnell characterized him as Dracula. He's sucking yeah. the blood out of everybody. He really but does. Some of the people don't realize that. Yep, and he just and he just picks and chooses. I mean, okay, who am I going to focus on today? Let's you know uh, demolish this group. Let's let's uh, you know yes. do something to this group. So it's yeah, very unfortunate. Nicole. Um, so I don't see any questions. I think myself and Michael both put in the chat the link for the phone banks, um, and we'll also include it in our. Uh, we'll add it to our club's website as well as in the next email blast. Great. Thank to you. The state party where you can go and sign up to phone bank right now. The phone banks are every Wednesday and Saturday. Uh, but like Emmett said, if you don't want to work for you, you can still do it on your own from the comfort of any place in your own home <laughs> with your cell phone or uh, laptop. And I did some phone banking a few weeks ago. It's really easy to use. Um, and it was, it was fun. So. So I will yeah. tell you, and Nicole is doing an outstanding job. Uh, she's a great partner. 
uh, from me at the state party. Um, she's uh, uh, chaired our diver uh, affirmative action committee. But one of the um, uh, charges I gave her um, when I first came in was to help me beef up our diversity leadership councils. And she really took the reins um, with uh, another officer, Abina, uh, Abina McAllister, and our uh, uh, parliamentarian, Greg Pecorero, and they did a fantastic job. So Nicole, thank you. Oh, I've, been, I've been at this in this spot before, and I did not have officers as engaged as, as you guys are. So I really do appreciate that. Fantastic. That's saying a lot. Yeah. Thanks, Nicole. No problem. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, let's see. Everybody seems to have taken off their sunglasses, well, except for Nicole. She's still cool. <laughs> I guess I need to do this because I started this, didn't I? <laughs> there we go. Here we go. Well, it's good to see everybody. Thank and, you all uh, so much for having me. Oh, thank you so, so much. It means so much. It keeps us going in the right direction. So I thank certainly you. hope so. So I know you guys are going to socialize and network and all that good stuff. So I'm going to yes. sign off. But thank you very much for inviting me. And anytime you want me to come back or anything you need from the state party, we are there for you. Just send us an email, pick up the phone and call. Okay? Okay. Thank Bye. Thanks, everyone. Right. Thank Bye. you. Take care.